Welcome to Channel 17 Town Meeting Television's Legislative Close-Up, Williston Edition. We're here in the Williston Historical Society room of the Dorothy Alling Memorial Library in Williston. I'm Elaine Haney, and my guests today are Senator Debbie Ingram of Chittenden County and Representative Terry McCaig of the Chittenden 2 District in Williston. So, Terry, Debbie, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, let's get right into it. All right. So, <laughs> Sounds good. Um, so there is a, a bill that has passed both the Senate and the House regarding um, the number of representatives per district in the Senate. So we have six senators in Chittenden County, and this bill would require us to have at least two districts with less than, right, no more than three senators per district. So at least two districts would be formed out of Chittenden County. What does that mean for us? And what does that mean um, once the census happens and perhaps our population has increased? Well, I'll dive in since I am a senator. How's that? So, um, <laughs> yes, I mean, um, it would definitely affect uh, Chittenden County. I, it, the combination of districts could be, uh, you know, could be any number of things. I mean, we could have, we could have six, one person, one senator districts. We could have, you know, four, uh, uh, one person districts and one two person district. We, mm -hmm. you know, we can all, mm -hmm. have all different kinds of combinations. So it will really be up to the reapportionment committee that will be formed after the census data comes in. Okay. And, um, you know, it's, it, it, it's often been um, thought in in the Senate that the six person district is is unwieldy and you know and we uh, the Chittenden County Senators actually co-sponsored the bill yeah. so we recognize that it's hard I think it's hard for the voters to to be able to um, weed through um, you know we often have 13 or 14 people running and I think it, it asks a lot of voters to research all those people it's and true. pick six. Yeah, it's confusing yeah and then it's also hard for new candidates to come in because you have a, a really uh, even stronger advantage as an incumbent than you would in other uh, other places right. so I think it, I think it'll be better for for everybody but we'll just have to kind of wait and see it'll, it won't happen until 2022 mm -hmm. so we'll see and because there's a a reapportionment board that takes care of that. I'm guessing it's based on population. So Williston could conceivably be at the center of one of these districts because mm -hmm. you have such a, a very decent sized population for a Vermont town. It could be in a growing uh, with about uh, 100 people per year in uh, Williston. So, mm -hmm. But we also have the outlier of Colchester not being part of Chittenden County in the current setup. Good point. And so, you know, what could happen? Uh, Colchester could be rolled into the, the mix, and uh, so we, or we're not, but uh, it would be very interesting to see what the, uh, the board comes up with. But the board um, doesn't have the final say, the legislature has okay. the final say over the actual reapportionment. Who makes up that board? Who sits on that board? Exactly. The legislature appoints them or the governor? The governor. The governor. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh -huh. That's going to be fascinating. Yeah, I can't so. wait to see, because that, I mean, there hasn't been a change like that in Vermont in decades. That's true. Well, so. and mo most states actually have one one senator districts and and you know truly I, I think that's probably the the best uh -huh. for uh, for the the uh, people that are represented. Um, so it's but our our statutes say that our senate districts should conform as closely as possible to the counties. So that's why historically uh, those geographic boundaries you mean? Okay. Yes, that's right. Yeah. So that's why we've had that kind of balance, um, but but I think uh, you know Terry's absolutely right that Colchester would be part of the mix, and then also uh, the fact that Chittenden County is the one area of the state that that grows consistently. So we might actually even really deserve to have seven um, instead of six, but but other parts of the state don't really like that too much. <laughs> uh, if Chittenden County gets you know outweighs too much the rest of the state, so it, yeah, it'll be very interesting. Uh, I don't even think the Senate has enough chairs. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> we got We got to. We got to top out at thirty. That's, exactly. that's total. That's, that's right. You stick someone on the end. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very curious to see how that's going to turn out. So that's we all are, very yeah. interesting conversation. So okay, starting this up coming week is week 14 and we still don't know how we're going to pay for clean water. So I've heard candy tax, I've heard software download tax, which I'd be fascinated to find out how that would actually work, um, and, and a variety of other possibilities. What's, let's do some handicapping. What do you think is going to happen 
at, by the end of the session, are we going to come up with a payment, the, the, way, to, the way to pay for it, or you know, we have to? We do have to. Uh, it's a matter of whether we can come up with a solution that the governor will um, approve of as well. Uh, I'm, you, know, you never can be sure uh, whether we have a veto-proof legislature or not uh, at this point. It's a little iffy. So, yeah, a little iffy. You know, we talked about the per parcel tax, which has a, uh, a direct uh, pro problem for Williston because we already have a tax on stormwater in the town. Ah. I think also South Burlington and Colchester do as well. So would it be fair to do a, a, a per parcel tax equally across the state, or do you talk about uh, a lower tax for people or, or towns that already have um, some kind of a funding mechanism? So uh, in the, I listened to the broadcast the other night too, and that the chair of the House Ways and Means Committee said, we'll come up with something between now and the time we're out of here. Remains to be seen, but I think we will. Why don't they want to touch the estate tax? That seems like possibly a good place to go. Yeah, well, that's, that is the governor's uh, proposal. Yeah. For his proposal is also to lower the amount of revenue that we would get from the estate tax. Mm -hmm. He wants to raise the, the <clears throat> limit. Um, um, you know, I think that's a possibility, but we're, you know, we're just really, I think both chambers are trying to weigh all the different demands on the budget with available revenue streams, and it, it always becomes a, you know, balancing and prioritizing mm -hmm. uh, act. And, uh, um, and yeah, we have to we have to work it out with the governor. But but I, I do want to say in the Senate we've been we've been trying to um, uh, frame frame the discussion a, a little bit differently um, to to make sure that that uh, our constituents understand that um, e even though there there may not be a single designated source of funding for water quality, we have the state has um, consistently over the last five years spent the money that it that we need to to make sure we are complying with the federal re requirements. Okay. And um, so I just want to make sure your viewers understand that in um, FY16 we started spending around 34 million dollars a year. Uh, we've worked our way up to spending uh, between 50 and 60 million dollars uh, and that includes federal federal monies that you know that we get. So so the you know the state has and the legislature have really had a, a strong commitment to making sure that we are paying for it. Okay. The the story has kind of switched to you know why don't we have a per par parcel tax or why don't we have a candy tax or why don't we have a specific tax for it? But the truth is we've we know that uh, clean water is important. We we prioritize it. We have always found uh, found the funding that we need. It varies a little bit uh, as as projects get completed and new ones need to be take, taken up, and hmm. the federal monies vary a little bit. So, uh, but we, you know, we're very attentive um, to it, and it, it's not quite as glum as some as sometimes well, people. It, um, it comes across in it. the news sometimes that you know Vermont needs twenty million dollars a year for the next twenty years mm -hmm. in order to do something, and it makes it sound like we're not doing anything. And, right, and, and that really clearly is not, not true. The, not <laughs> the really. case. So, are there impaired waterways in Williston? Sure. Yes, Allen Brook is an impaired waterway, and um, uh, we've been dealing with that for quite a number of years mm -hmm. now, and that's why we, we have our own uh, per parcel uh, fee uh, in Williston as well to take care of the, the problems with uh, Allen Brook, and who knows, we might have more than just that. But, um, but so yes, it'll, it'll have some bearing on us. Uh, just follow up on what Debbie is saying as far as funding goes. The committee I sit on in the House, the, uh, the Corrections and Institutions Committee, we deal with a capital bill, which deals with bonded money. And every year, there's a certain amount of money that goes towards uh, clean water. And the, for the biennium, I think we have around $24 million uh, set aside in bonded money. And okay. the problem, yeah, and the problem with bonded money is uh, it raises the debt, the debt limit that we have, and that amount that we see goes down every biennium. So that we, were, when I started in the legislature, I think we had about 180 million over a biennium to work with. We're down to about 123 million right now on the biennium. That continues to go down. Hmm. So. Is Lake Iroquois seeing algae, or is, is that also impaired? 
It, uh, it is, yeah. I, I, I've served on the select board with uh, with Terry, and we've had a variety of different. Uh, the uh, let's see, the muscles were zebra muscles have been a, have been a problem. Oh and, no, kidding! And uh, ver yeah, various um, and algae has been a problem in the past. So does yeah. Allenbrook run into Lake Iroquois, or are they? Separate? It does not. Mm -hmm. Okay, so okay, so that's people bringing their boats in, and zebra muffles on the bottom of the boats, or that that and the uh, the the weeds that are the problem in oh. Lake Iroquois right now. It's a, a big uh, problem with the milfoil. Ah, and okay. especially around the beach area mm -hmm. and other parts of the lake. So that there is an, an association, uh, the Lake Iroquois Association, that is dealing, try, uh, dealing with the, the problem with boats. They have a, a bunch of volunteers that uh, actually wor uh, work to, uh, with the boat owners as they come to put their boats in the water or take them out to wash them down, yeah. which is really neat. They have uh, some monies and they've been a, a, uh, approaching the towns for some money for the milfoil control as well. Williston has been very uh, good about supplying money on a yearly basis for that particular program. So while it's not uh, totally effective, um, it helps. Mm -hmm. They were denied a permit from the um, uh, Agency of Environmental Conservation uh, in the last year for using a chemical mm -hmm. uh, to uh, control, control it and they will there's some ongoing studies on the particular chemical that they're proposing to use, so they may be back with a proposal on that um, in a year or two. Mm -hmm. It's just something that seems to grow and grow in terms of the responsibility of the town to take care of these kinds of issues and the mandates coming down for the level of, of clean water that you need to have. And it's a really, I'm, I'm hoping that the decision is made somehow soon that there's going to be the funding that we need because the towns are having a hard time paying for that stuff. You're right. Mm -hmm. Well, it's, yeah, Williston has really <clears throat> been out, out in front, and I, I would say most of Chittenden County has really been out in front of the rest of the state. But I, I was on the select board with Terry when we spent years uh, literally going through very carefully um, mm -hmm. You know what what the exact problems were with our um, you know impairment and our, our stormwater mitigation needs, um, and uh, coming up with a stormwater coordinator here in Williston and mm -hmm. a per parcel fee that's mm -hmm. one thing for residences it gives a break to our farms. Uh, it's a different uh, formula for our commercial property, mm -hmm. and we you know, and we've really I, you know I think a lot of uh, people in the state would say you know Williston and then you know South Burlington and some other areas of the of Chittenden County have been uh, leaders in, mm -hmm. in how to deal with this and how to pay for it hmm. equitably. Um, so, you know, I'm, I look forward to the rest of the, you know, to the state being able to, you know, to um, follow that example and, yeah. and you, know, you know, really do the job that we need. Hmm. Now you touched on development and stormwater, so let's go there. What is up with all of the building happening at Taft's Corners? I mean, that is some substantial additions of, it's mostly apartments, is that right? Uh, yeah, a lot of, well, it's housing. Right well, mm -hmm. it's, it's mixed things. Actually, I, you know, I, I actually think that Williston has been, um, has done a really good job of being disciplined about our development. I know that, you know, sometimes, again, it's, you know, perception is a little bit that, well, oh, we, you just, know, we, it used you know, to be this the, field and right. now it's like all these places. It's amazing. <laughs> right. Not necessarily bad, just <laughs> right. really right. incredible how fast that's moving. It's true, but we've had a, a growth management system in place for, for decades that, um, ha has really kept the um, the growth at a at a certain uh, a level uh, year by year, and it, it happens that some you know some of these projects that have been going on for a long time are now kind of at the point where they can add um, you know some some of the um, apartments and some of the the homes and and actually we have an, another development that'll be mixed use so it'll have retail as well as okay. uh, as, as living space. Um, so they, some of them are, you know, they are kind of coming to fruition. But I think, um, you know, and Terry's been on this like word longer than I was. I, I mean, I, and but I was, I chaired a, a couple of affordable housing task forces, and we, uh, and I was on the planning commission. So I mean, this has been, this is a big issue for Williston. Yeah. And um, you know, I think that. Um, Folks can be confident that we that we've done um, a really disciplined job of, of trying to make sure that we don't just have an explosion of, explosion of sprawl. We sure. you know we have it concentrated in one part of the town. Mm -hmm. I live in the you know the rural area, and it's you know I pass by a farm when I go home. So it, it, and that's really isn't that like seventy five or eighty percent of town is is rural still. So. Okay. 
I think South Burlington Select Board recently put a moratorium on development because there was concerns among the residents of rapid growth all over the place. So you're not seeing that here, the concern of? We do see some concern um, uh, from some residents where you have a particular uh, development that's existed for uh, probably at least 20 years. And on the uh, edge of that development, there's a whole bunch of land that is suitable for development. Mm -hmm. And in fact, it's been proposed to do that. Um, and the residents now have asked the town to join in a, a suit uh, against the Act 250 Commission to say uh, it's, there are too many issues that, uh, that violate Act 250. Even though it passed all of the town regulations, it passed mm. the Act 250 uh, criteria. So now that the citizens are saying there's too much development, we need to take a pause on, mm -hmm. on development. Uh, I moved into town in 1966 with my family, and at that time, Taft Corners had a blinking red and yellow light. <laughs> that, was, that was it. Of course, around there was fields, and so I've seen development happen yes, you have. from a town of about 1,500, perhaps, when we moved in to a town of over 9,000 right now. Wow. So. Um, and Debbie's correct. Uh, the, I think that the town has done a good job on saying development will happen here where the, uh, the growth centers are. And, and that's, where, uh, that's what the plans are right now. Are there concerns about the number of retail outlets coming in? So there's going to be some mixed use, you said, with some retail in there. Are you concerned about empty storefronts? Is there enough commercial viability in Williston still to support more merchants? Well, I think so, and I think a lot of these. Um, uh, I mean, from time to time, you you know you see turnover, um, but I uh, you know I think most of the retailers are, are especially the ones that you know are more kind of uh, franchised. Uh, you know, they do studies to see what sure. the market is like and sure. that sort of thing. So, I mean, they don't just come in in blind. And um, um, you know, I think I mean Chittenden County, <laughs> the whole county continues to be an economic driver for the state, and I think Williston. Uh, is an economic driver for the for the county, yeah. and so you know ultimately, I mean, we have these growing pains, and some folks who have been in town for a long time sort of lament the change. But I think overall, um, the fact that we're generating more jobs and we're we're putting money into the economy um, is a, is a really good thing for yeah. for all Vermonters, and it's it's what we we want to we want to see. And there are other parts of the state that wish that they had the kind of you know, growth um, and um, increase in, in economic development that, that we have. Yeah, yeah. So, Which, oh, please well, go We ahead. just had a store, uh, of course, uh, Toys R Us went out of business, yes. and we just had a, um, a business that's going to take over that, uh, that building. Oh, that is that REI, REI. REI. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's a good yeah. sign. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the, the select board actually uh, asked the town manager to organize some kind of a presentation from other towns, not necessarily in Vermont, but other towns around the nation that have undergone a, a, a problem like this, where mm -hmm. uh, the stores have closed and nothing's come in to take their place. So see what they have done and what we might look forward to as far as planning for something like that to happen. Absolutely. It's important to get ahead of that and not have large yep. vacant spaces right, in exactly. addition to small vacant spaces peppered all over town. Right. Mm -hmm. That's great. And REI is going to be a good addition. Yes. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Are any of your residents talking to you about cannabis sales in the stores in Williston? Yes, I've heard. I've heard. Um, I heard some of that. Um, and what's, yeah, the, what's I mean, the prognosis of whether that's even going to be a thing this year with the legislature? Well, a lot of it's up to the House. <laughs> actually, <laughs> the Senate's passed bills what three, four, or five years running. I yeah. think, but it's it's the House has always been a little less mm -hmm. uh, enthusiastic about this. <laughs> I think the head count is going on right now to see whether the uh, there's uh, the will to go ahead this year or not. Mm -hmm. uh, we're getting down to, as you said, the, the, close to the end of the session, we're yeah. more than two-thirds of the way uh, done. Um, is there enough time for the House to take action? I question that as mm. to whether or not that'll happen. It may happen next year. Um, but yes, there's concern, I think, on at least on some of the citizens' parts. We had a, uh, a so-called opioid conference this past Tuesday here in town that attracted over 150 people to, okay. to come to it. And part of that was on marijuana, part was on opioid problems. And uh, so I think you know we, we currently have a, a zoning 
a uh, place where cannabis can be uh, grown and okay. in town. And I think there's, there'll be concern on the, on the residents' uh, part that um, whether we allow actual retail sales of it right. will be, uh, I think, a question. But, you know, if it we're surrounded by other towns that sell it uh, retail-wise, uh, we're going to have to bite the bullet, I think. Our, so I don't recall whether it's been this specific in the bills that have come out of the Senate and have gone to the House, but are towns going to be able to opt in to selling marijuana, or do they have to, like, is it just going to be assumed every town can and they have to opt out if they don't want to? Well, again, towns can set up their own um, uh, ordinances about uh, governing it, and so they could they could not, you know, they could outlaw them completely. But um, okay. but the whole state will be, you know, it will be legal if should we, okay. you know, should we okay. vote in one of, you know, enact one of these. And how would it work? You know, select boards are also the li board of liquor control for each town. So how would it work with selling cannabis? Would it would a do you need to get a license from D, the Department of Liquor and Lottery, or do you where where is that authority to allow it to happen sitting? Is it with the state or is it with, with the town? Uh, the current the, the most recent bill that we passed in the Senate that we've sent over would um, would have the state um, uh, regulating them, and, and so yes, you would have to get a license from from the, the, state. From the state. Okay, okay. It's curious when. It feels like it's something that the town should have a little bit more authority over to do. Mm -hmm. So, so you're saying that the town would have to go the ordinance route. That's right, and but the zoning I, route. Like. But, but they could, you know, prohibit a, um, a retail space from being in within, you know, X number of feet from a school, right. or From a church, or, right. or you know, or they, you know, they can. Um, We're in this parcel hours. way over can, here, where. <laughs> right, right, yes, yeah. I mean, the, and, and, and all the different, you know, kind of planning and zoning things that towns already have in place. They, you know, the uh, any kind of cannabis sales would have to conform to, to all that. Yeah, mm -hmm. okay. Now, Terry, you mentioned um, you had an opiate discussion yes. this past week here yes. in Williston. Yes, we did. Mm -hmm. So tell me more about that. What, what, what so, happened? Uh, part of the attraction, because anytime you have food involved, it's a, uh, a drawing card. So a number of uh, organizations got together to have this conference and started at six o'clock with a, a, a buffet uh, dinner and then started at 6.30 until 8.30 with various presenters talking about um, the how addiction works on the, on the brain, both for alcohol, marijuana, and opioids. Um, we had some breakout, two, two or three breakout times when smaller groups got together to talk about what, uh, what they wanted in town as far as um, uh, what the issues are in town uh, for all of the, the, the things. And I th think uh, at my table anyway, people were focused more on marijuana uh, mm -hmm. than on the opioid uh, problems that we have. But it was a, a good uh, facilitated uh, discussion uh, and the next steps I guess will be uh, to have people who are interested in following up on this to get together and work more on the problems. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the Williston Rotary was the key sponsor of this particular conference in town, and they'll continue, I believe. And there was some good funding, I can't remember uh, by who for this, but it was some good monetary sponsoring of this too for taking care of the food and the facilitators and things like that. So you're seeing a good response from the business community as well as the human services community about tackling the problem in Williston. Well, yeah, I think that um, uh, I, I was actually at this um, uh, event as well, and, and I'm a member of the Rotary Club here in Williston. So, I, you know, I think, and what I hear from constituents as we are considering um, this whole legalization and the and the um, sale of uh, you know of cannabis is it brings up the idea of prevention and what we can do to educate our youth especially to uh, to understand the harm that can come right. from from all kinds of substances from tobacco from alcohol from marijuana from uh, from opioids um, so that so that we have prevention going along in a, on a parallel track and is also well resourced as the regulation of the sales uh, and, and growth uh, of cannabis. Um, you know, we need to have both. Yeah. And um, several of us in the Senate have been really insistent that we wouldn't vote in favor of this regulation of cannabis 
uh, unless we have a really robust prevention program. Okay. And uh, much of that depends on the communities. And, and again, Williston has been out in the forefront, I mm -hmm. think, in, in having this community gathering and and um, you know, trying to figure out how can we do this, how can we help our youth. There are other countries, Iceland, there's the Icelandic model, maybe some of your viewers have heard of that, that they went from having this astronomical use of, um, of, of drugs in their country to hardly any. And it, it much, really? Yeah, and, and much of it has been, uh, so they were using that as a model for, for other countries. And, and they representatives from the country, you know, have come to speak to people in the United States, and we've had some at the state house. And it, but it's very much a community-centered uh, thing. It's giving, it's making sure that kids have other things to do, especially in that crucial 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. Uh, period. So they have after-school activities. They're in sports. They have hobbies. They have you know uh, support groups, friends other things to do besides use drugs. Um, they, um, you know, and then, and then having the parents and other adults in their lives be, you know, real supports and, mm -hmm. um, you know, helping them to, to and, and education to help them understand the effects on the brain and mm -hmm. on their lives of using these substances. Right. That's great. Yes, yeah. <laughs> it's this, great that Williston's getting out in front of that. Yeah, huh? this yeah. sort of brought up uh, in, during the course of, of the discussion about whether we should have a community center here, you know, was mm. was organized activities, mm. especially for the after school yeah. uh, group as well. Right, so, right. and we've been toying with the community mm. center concept for a number of years now, and haven't mm. uh, come up with a, a firm decision on whether to go forward or not. I see. Does Williston have a rec department, or yes, you do? Mm. Okay, so yeah. that might be something that would <clears throat> pair up with a community center. Yep. Mm -hmm. Nice, mm -hmm. nice. Mm -hmm. So Debbie, I understand you are working on a lot of social justice issues at the State House. Can you give me an example of some of the work you're doing and how far along it's come? Yes, yeah, yeah, thanks for asking. Um, I think it's really important for us as we, as the population in, in Vermont continues to be more and more diverse with refugees and with immigrants and people come from other states, that we need to make sure that we, uh, and, and with what's going on in a lot of the other, um, the rest of the country, we want to make sure that uh, we communicate clearly to people that we are welcoming and hospitable mm -hmm. and, um, you know, we want everybody to come. So a um, few things going on. So I, I worked hard on an ethnic studies bill for our schools. Mm -hmm. Um, and that was put together by a coalition of uh, different groups of people of color, um, by uh, folks who uh, have different disabilities, by the LGBTQ community, by um, uh, uh, the Jewish and Muslim communities. Uh, so this has set up a working group to examine our curriculum and make um, mm -hmm. recommendations to the State Board of Education um, and, to, and to local school districts about how they can ensure that um, Kids, our kids in school are learning about the contributions of these various groups and the benefits of, ha of all of us living together and the way that we can respect um, uh, one another. Um, and then um, I, I also, uh, I'm very excited because I, for three years I've sponsored a bill to uh, change uh, Columbus Day to Indigenous ah. Peoples Day. Mm -hmm. And our Abnaki community, um, you know, has has been advocating for that, and um, I'm very happy to say that I think it was just Friday, just Friday that uh, the House passed uh, the oh, Senate bill. Oh, that's great! So, uh, and we expect the governor to, you know, to sign it. So that's that's really exciting. Is that is it going to replace Columbus Day? That's for right. Us? It will it will replace Columbus Day. Okay. For us. Yeah. Yes. That's that's impressive that that happens. Yes. Yeah. It's <laughs> it's really great. Lots of uh, cities across the country have done that, and Alaska and South Dakota. Have done that, but we'll uh, we'll be another state nice. to, to, have, to have done that. Yeah. Well, I think we have time for for like one more question. So, Terry, you're in corrections and institutions in the house, and what are some of the um, corrections issues that you've been working on this year? And so, uh, during the first year of the biennium, corrections issues sort of take a back seat until we get through with the capital bill, and we're through uh, with the capital okay. bill, and we've been working very hard on something called uh, earned good time. Okay. Uh, good time existed uh, a long time ago in Vermont until about 2005, I think, and then it was abandoned because it was very hard to keep track of uh, for prisoners. So we're working on an, an earned good time bill, and which we, I believe, will pass out of committee next week. Perhaps it's a Senate bill that will modify, as usual. <laughs> <laughs> and they Is do it the ever same for us. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it works both ways. <laughs> but we'll come up with a with a concept uh, that will uh, allow people uh, 
who are good prisoners to earn uh, a certain amount of time off of their both their minimum and their maximum sentences. Mm -hmm. It will get people out of jail earlier if they're good prisoners, which is the concept to have them get back into the community and be uh, wage earners and taxpayers like we all, all are. And um, so that's the, one of the ones that we're working on right now. We're talking about a, a presumptive parole uh, bill as well that will probably have some um, some workings on that'll actually come into fruition next year on that particular thing. So that right now we have all sorts of ways that people get on our furloughs. And it would make more sense, I think, to have one concept for um, uh, parole mm -hmm. and go with that and use the parole board as our, um, our main uh, focus on that. Mm -hmm. And next week we'll have the parole board folks in to talk about that. Okay. You are both doing some really important work. Well, thank you. Thank you for taking the time to share with us, Terry and Debbie. I really appreciate taking the time. And best of luck with the rest of the session. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much.